bird dog exercise. I'm gonna do that for you today. I uh, still do those bird dog exercise. You're gonna love them, almost anybody can do them. Also cinnamon rolls. Does anybody miss cinnamon rolls? Kaufman friendly cinnamon rolls, Abby's in the kitchen. You're gonna absolutely love this. I'm opening today with this headline. Cancer drug could potentially treat chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, lung problems and a cancer drug. You don't suppose COPD may have a fungal basis, do you? And also Alan North is here. He's gonna talk about ketogenic diet, the keto med product that he developed. All that and more on this Know the Cause. For the past 45 years, I have dedicated my life and my whole career to finding the root cause of disease. And I now know with certainty that we must play a role in our own health care. I'm a self-care advocate. And you know what? Every time you change your diet for the better, exercise or swallow a nutritional supplement, so are you. Now welcome to Know the Cause. As some of you know, my dear mother, who passed away seven or eight years ago, uh, it never hired a plumber. She did all her own electrical, plumbing work. Dad had a handicap. He lost a leg. Uh, Mom did everything. So they bought this cabin out in Julian, California, up in the mountains or on a, a lake out there. And it started leaking, and she got under the home and tried to fix plumbing. She could never breathe right uh, afterwards. And I told her, Mom, you probably have an invasive type of fungal infection. Where would I have gotten that? The home was leaking. You were laying in mud fixing the plumbing. Uh, and so she went to the doctor, and sure enough, I believe it was aspergillosis or something. She had aspergillus infection in her lung. He gave her antifungals. She got better. Here's a new report that came out. Uh, cancer drugs could potentially treat what Mom had, chronic obstructive pulmonary or lung disease. And I thought, my goodness, we are in desperate need of new treatment for COPD. Millions of people all over the world live with the disease and has massive impact on the quality of their lives, especially as the disease progresses. What it's saying, folks, is as we get old, COPD gets worse and worse and worse. Mom did not die of COPD, although she could have. She probably got it when she was 75 years old. Mom lived to be 85 years old. Neutrophilic inflammation, so now what this article does, neutrophilic inflammation is also central to the progression of chronic inflammatory diseases as, such as rheumatoid arthritis. Research has the potential to impact not only people with COPD, and what they're saying here is our white blood cells are responsible. They seem to gather at sites of inflammation. And folks, that's not the way God put our white blood cells together. Yes, gather at the site of inflammation, to gobble up the fungus that I believe induces the inflammation. First, let me define what this COPD is, right? Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease causes damage to the lungs and is driven by an inflammation, by inflammation is caused by immune cells called neutrophils. I don't believe that. I don't believe neutrophils were here to induce rheumatoid arthritis or to cause chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or any other inflammatory disease, folks. It's not the way we were constructed, right? Something invisible might be making the white blood cells rush and gobble up those that have the phagocytic nature that can gobble up fungus, bacteria, debris, artifacts, etc. Okay, so here's uh, proof of that. Neutrophils are our most important immune defense cells. They protect us against infections. They don't run over there and make us inflamed and infected. Neutrophils play a crucial role in host defense against invasive candidiasis and what mom had, aspergillosis. Neutrophil depletion in mice renders them highly susceptible to invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. Look, I don't know where mom's immune system was. We were grown, we had kids, we lived in Texas, they lived in California. But when I went out to see her, she had just gone through a spirometry test, that machine that, okay, Alice, the doctor told her, blow, and she just, and it showed she had about 60% lung volume. Where's the other 40%? Folks, fungus takes up space and will rob you of useful life. 
Look at this. These are white blood cells that induce inflammation. Fungus causes inflammation. The fungal mycotoxin ochratoxin causes livers to swell. The fungal mycotoxin xerelinone causes intestinal inflammation. The mycotoxin deoxynivalenol, or DOM, causes inflammation in animal intestinal cells. Candida yeast could stimulate the inflammation responses in human blood cells. The point I want to make is this. It isn't the neutrophils. It isn't our white blood cells that make us inflamed. They're there for a reason, and it's not to induce COPD in mom or arthritis in you. Basically, if I had COPD, here's what I would do. Rule out fungus first. I check my home for mold and fungus, then I'd get tested for fungus. Any physician can do this today thanks to a new blood and tissue test called a polymerase chain reaction. Write that down, please. PCR. Ask your doctor, he'll know what it is. I'd like a PCR test. Fungi can be detected within a few days rather than a few weeks. Um, if you suffer from inflammation, if your C-reactive protein blood test is high, tell your doctor you'd like a fungal test, a PCR fungal test. See if fungus is causing the inflammation. Because I don't believe human white blood cells do that. Alan North. Alan North joins me right now, folks. It was uh, a year ago that Alan finally introduced a product. It was called KetoMed. Thousands of you have tried this product. And that was uh, after five years of research. Well, is that not quite five? Four years, of, uh, 10 months, Almost something like five. that. Almost five. It was wild. Alan came to me, because we've known each other since he was a little boy. And uh, Alan came to me and said, I'm mad. I'm trying to follow a keto diet, Doug, much like your Kaufman diet. You know, the, and, and look at what's in this bar. And I was amazed. <laughs> Remember, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable how many things I don't think should be on a keto diet were in that bar. Then the shakes, then the products. You know, there's all these products. So I said, complain or compete. And uh, sure enough, he competed. This is flying off the shelves for a reason. Now that you've had a year under your belt, and you did something amazing, Alan. You had an answering service. There's, yeah, what's your name? What's your credit card number? See, you know, and you said we're not going to have that. So you and our mutual friend, I, you know what? And I had the most fun. I've gotten an opportunity to talk to so many of the audience. And I got to say, Doug, the 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 know the cause audience is a very educated audience, mm -hmm. very sophisticated, very smart. They they know supplements, they know nutrition very well, and they want the best. And the, and and they they know that keto med is different. They know that you can't find it. You can't find a formula like this anywhere, anywhere, any any store, online, anywhere, in any any doctor's office. It's that unique. Do you know how many people make hot chocolate for their kids and grandkids without the dairy? Using keto med becomes really helpful to that child. Here, here's what's really interesting: is uh, and, 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 as as we know, in a lot of cases, you know, when you're you're talking about like the medical establishment and big farm, a lot of times, if it's perceived to be an alternative health product or program, you'll you'll see a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. The opposite has happened. I now we now have a a, a physician, probably about once a week, call and how could I get this to my patients. So it's really interesting. There's a paradigm shift, Alan. When you have something that works, doctors didn't learn clinical nutrition. And they're so excited when their patients come in and say, well, here's what I did. I cut out carbs, you know, I'm still eating meats, and it blows their mind. You can eat meat and you don't have colon cancer. Um, the right meat, the right products. Tell us a little bit about what's called MCT oils. There are good fats and bad fats. What, what have you included in this? We have actually have a patented blend of MCTs. It's a very high potency blend of MCTs. There's actually 20 grams of purified MCTs. Now, a lot of people equate uh, medium chain triglyceride. That's what it stands for, medium chain triglyceride. It's a special class of fat. And like everything, like vitamins, like minerals, like amino acids, not all are the same. Mm. And so we normally equate MCTs with coconut oil. Sure. And so because it's a buzzword, a lot of times you'll, you'll, you're now seeing packages that say MCTs right on the label, right on the front of the label. And then, you know, you look at that back of the label, you want to, I want to read the ingredient deck and I'm, I'm waiting to read where, the, where are those MCTs. And it will just say coconut oil. And so they're illegally allowed to do that because coconut oil contains MCTs. 
but not the same matrix of MCTs as keto meds. So the, 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 the predominant MCT within coconut oil is, they, they number them, it's called C12, mm -hmm. uh, which is caprylic acid. And there, there's, there's, there's four main um, MCTs. There's capric acid, caprylic acid, caprylic acid, which is the C8, and that's the most meaningful. That's the most meaningful MCT. Why is that? Because it's the most ketogenic, it also helps to support, not support, but it helps to deal with, with fungus the, the better than any other MCT. Um, and then that's, that's, published, that's published research. I just remember one time you came to me or texted me. You should see our text back and forth while he was developing this over the years. Um, you could have done this for half the price by using coconut. <laughs> Even less than half the price, because because the like like I said, the, the predominant MCT in coconut oil is the lauric acid, mm -hmm. which is great, but it's actually arguably not an MCT based on how it biochemically behaves in the body. It's actually a great, it's it's great to take. It's a great ingredient, but in terms of comparing it to the other MCTs, I'll give you an example: the C8, the caprylic acid, the predominant MCT in keto med will help raise endogenous ketones literally 10 times that of coconut oil, which, which, which becomes important, especially if someone has a, what we would refer to as a broken metabolism. They have, they have, they have, they have trouble uh, uh, becoming keto adapted, right, right. and they need extra help to support that. It has three times more potency in terms of endo building endogenous ketones compared to other MCTs. So that's a huge, huge distinction. Again, not all uh, MCTs are, are, are the same, and, and it just happens to be that the, 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 the C8's the most rare, it's the most hard to, it's hard, it's the hardest to extract, and it's the most expensive. Uh, my kids uh, were at the house, and I've got my bucket sitting there, and they each put it in their coffee. Right. Stirred it up. They got one of those little brrrr, stirred up and shot it down. And literally within five minutes, they're going, holy cow, that gives a totally, I didn't use cream, that gives a totally different, a total different taste to that coffee. Let's go back to the argument that some still have that I'm concerned about dipping into ketosis. And so many doctors confuse the word ketosis, right. oh. you know. Uh, with ketoacidosis. You're not going into ketoacidosis, a diabetic disease, but should we be concerned? For example, if I had an autoimmune disease, I'd take a bucket of this to my doctor and say, I'm gonna start taking that a few times a day in lieu of a meal and ease myself into ketosis. And at that point, would you redraw my blood and tell me how I'm doing? I'm so glad you asked that, Doug, because the thing is, is that th those, th those are myths. Those myths have been dispelled because the reality is, is that it, it, originally, you know, people get fearful of what they don't understand. Sure. But, but ketosis, and when, when I say ketosis, again, like you said, I'm not talking about ketoacidosis and I'm not talking about starvation ketosis. I'm talking about pure, healthy, nutritional ketosis that has a very positive impact. On, on, on metabolism, on cognitive energy, on fat loss, mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, on a whole whole list of things. And it's, but more importantly, it's natural. Mm -hmm. we, 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 you know, we've heard about the benefits of fasting. There's a, there's a myriad of benefits of fasting. fasting yeah. And you just can't sustain fasting. But this is a way to mimic fasting or mimic starvation, but get the benefits but a sustainable nutritional way. That's why they call it nutritional ketosis. Ketoacidosis is a dangerous thing that can only happen when no insulin is made, and that can only happen if you're type one diabetic. He's got three products now. The company is growing. It's a boutique nutraceutical company. I'm so proud of you. Oh, Four or five years you. ago, you sat down with me and said, what do you think? Here you are today. Oh, well exciting. done, well done, yeah, congratulations. Hi everyone, my name is Abby. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make cinnamon rolls. I'm very excited about this recipe. It's a little bit tricky because it'll work with the dough because it's really sticky, but I'll show you some tips and tricks. But it's great to have this recipe for like a nice family weekend or anything like that. But we're going to go ahead and get started. First thing off, making the dough. We're starting off with a bowl full of almond flour. Then we're going to add coconut flour, a little bit of salt, 
some ground flax meal. Got a little bit of xanthan gum, some baking powder, and for my sweetener today, I'm using monk fruit. Now we're just gonna mix this all together so it's all nice and symmetrical and incorporated. I also wanna try and get all the lumps out of the almond flour because sometimes almond flour likes to stick to itself. Okay, now from here, we're gonna add in some vanilla, some apple cider vinegar, a little bit of heavy cream, three room temperature eggs, and some softened butter, a little bit of water. And then you're just gonna mix everything together until it forms a nice sticky dough. Okay, now I've got my dough nice and mixed. Now you need to let this sit for at least five minutes. Just let it sit off to the side. You don't have to cover or anything like that. While it's sitting off to the side, we're gonna make our cinnamon filling. So again, I've got a whole stick of butter, which is, comes out to be about half of a cup. I've got a lot of cinnamon. Again, this butter was pre-softened. It's not melted, but it's very soft. And then we've got some more monk fruit. And I'm just gonna take a spoon and just mix everything together as best I can. It's gonna be, it's gonna kind of form like a paste, almost, if you will. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm gonna let my dough continue to rest for another couple minutes. I've got my mixture, my cinnamon mixture, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean up, get some parchment paper, and I'll be right back. We're back, my dough has rested for about five minutes or so. Um, I've got my cinnamon filling ready to go. Now we're ready to roll out. First thing we're gonna do before we get our dough out of the bowl is one trick is we're gonna oil our hands. So I've got a little bit of coconut oil over here. I'm gonna take a tiny little chunk of that. And you just want to rub it around on your hands a little bit. This dough is really sticky. So when you oil your hands, your hands won't stick to the dough nearly as bad. So I've got my oily hands. I'm just going to take that dough out of the bowl. And I want to form it into a ball. Make sure you get all the dough off of the spoon too. Because you need all the dough. Now we're just gonna make this a nice little ball. Pop it in the center of our parchment paper. I've already got the parchment paper laid out, everything like that. Now what I'm gonna do, I've got another roll of parchment paper. Set it down on top, squish it in, and we're just gonna roll it out. Ooh. Okay, now from here, we're gonna start with our cinnamon filling. Give it another quick mix, just make sure everything's ready to go. And then just start popping it. And just keep spreading it out. Looks nice and even. You want to get almost all the way down to the very end, but not all the way towards the edge at the bottom, because you're going to need that little bit of space to seal off the end of your cinnamon roll. All right. Now, I've got a little bit left over, but I'm going to show you what to do with that in a second. Now my hands aren't as oily as they need to be, so I'm gonna get a little more coconut oil. Rub them around. Got any chunks of coconut oil left, put them back in your little bowl. You're not gonna use it for eating or anything like that. Now I'm gonna take the parchment paper and I'm gonna use it to roll the dough over on itself. Okay, now we've got our knife, we've got our cinnamon rolls. I've got a circular pan here. You don't need to grease it. Trust me, there's enough butter and all this stuff, you don't need to grease it. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and slice it up. This is gonna make around nine cinnamon rolls. Then you're just gonna go through and just give it a quick little slice. And now we take them and just place them. Your pan. Last little one. Okay, now these are almost ready to go. My oven is preheated at 400 degrees. First thing I'm gonna do though with the rest of that cinnamon filling, I've got just a little bit left. So what I'm gonna do 
I'm going to take it, I'm going to plop it a little bit on the pan in between the rolls. So it'll just give you more of that cinnamon butter gooiness. All right, now this is going to go in the oven for 400 degrees for five minutes. Then I'm going to turn the oven down to 350 and it's going to cook for another 15 minutes. Okay. Oh, look at that. Came right out. Again, like I said, there's enough butter in here. There's no way they're sticking to this pan. They're nice. They're still warm, but they're not super hot. So we're going to go ahead and put on our cream cheese frosting. Again, this is just cream cheese, a little bit of heavy cream, some sweetener, some vanilla. And we're just going to go ahead and put this lather this on. I'm going to go ahead and take a bite. All right, see it's nicely cooked all the way through. If you don't like the look of this, you'd always don't, you don't necessarily have to flip it over. You can leave it right side up. And you got the nice little cinnamon roll looking section right there, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a bite. Mm. The cream cheese frosting really adds a lot to it. It's so good. We can find the whole, uh, the whole recipe on our website at knowthecause.com. Make these, let me know how you like them. Oh, they're so good. They're nice and crumbly. Oh, I love them. Have a great day, guys. You know, I don't know if anybody loves the aging process, right? Look at my hair, for gosh sakes. I was young one time. When you follow a healthy diet, the next step is sleeping better at night and so forth. Exercise, folks. Put the diet and the exercise, your supplementation program, all together. But I'm too old to exercise. Not true. There's a million reasons to exercise, not the least of which is it's great for your heart. And you can do simple exercises, like this bird dog exercise. Any of you can kneel on the floor and lift a leg, start slowly, and then build up. Are you sleeping well at night? No, so many of you say. How about the hour before you go to bed? You try a few of these, maybe 10 of them go light initially. But the important thing, the take home message here is, you're following the diet, you're losing the weight, you're feeling better, now get the blood circulating. You can do this in the morning when you get up, or in the evening right before you go to bed if sleep is a problem. Try this, simple, easy, do it at home. Best part, free. Yeah, I'm still nodding, cinnamon rolls. These guys, the film crew here, as they're uh, filming Abby, they get to try those. And they were just absolutely delicious, as you can imagine. Um, folks, what, so cancer drugs helping people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. See, if I had any lung disease, asthma or any, I'd have a bronchoscopy done by a doctor who knows fungus, and I'd have them isolate which fungus might be clogging or inflaming my lungs. I mean, that's what I do first. Okay, Alan North, Keto Med. I am so proud of Alan. That product took him a huge amount of borrowed money and about three years to bring to market. That's the real thing. That's the real MCT oils. That's the real product. So if you want to go on a keto diet and have a meal or two replacement, that's it. Thank you for being with me today. God bless you folks. I'll see you next time.